Hey, it's Matt Pinfield. This is KLOS Noon Approved. I'm here with a very good friend of mine who I've known for many years in his days with Nine Inch Nails. And, of course, his band Filter, who are back with a great new album called The Algorithm. Their first in seven years. I'm here with the one and only Richard Patrick. Richard, good to see you, man. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. You know, it's uh, well, you and I go back, you know, to the really the Nine Inch Nails days. We met the first time mm -hmm. when you guys were touring on a Pretty Hate Machine mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, and uh, it's amazing how far we've come over all these years. But yeah. you know, I, Patrick, uh, Richard, I got to talk to you about like you and I mean, it all starts. Obviously, that was the first band that you. We're in that, you know, obviously got some notoriety. But talk to me about you as a musician. Talk to me about you as a kid. What was the thing that got you interested in, be in music, music and being a it musician? Was, it was wild. My dad had a big, huge stereo. And he yeah. loved stereo equipment. And he listened to Neil Diamond, Hot August Nights, a lot. Live album that's not, by the way, recorded not far from here at the Greek. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, he he played that record all the time and there was a and i was four or yeah. five and i remember like pretending to play the guitar and there's a moment where neil diamond talks to his guitar player in the in the recording he says take it rich and i would be like oh that's me rich. yeah you know you yeah, know what I mean? okay yeah. and uh but since then like everything about music is just amazing like the 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 places music takes me, the emotions I feel when I hear music uh, to this day is, is, is it's it's weird. I feel like I I appreciate it more than anyone. Like you know, and um, I I uh, I asked my mom for a guitar when I was like nine or something around that age, and she got me an acoustic, and then. And then by Christmas for my birthday, and then by Christmas I was asking for an electric guitar, so they bought me an electric guitar. And uh, I just started playing and got into little bands in, you know, in uh, grade Gee, school. Yeah. And, and then eventually I, I started my own band, my band The Act, which started playing around town in Cleveland. And then uh, I ran into a guy named Trent Reznor who was starting his band Nine Inch Nails and then I just fell in love with his music and um, boom we started making music well I, I actually jumped on as his touring guitarist and uh, then in the middle of Nine Inch Nails I started working on demos for my own project and I was going to call it Filter and then at some point I left Nine Inch Nails and then got a record deal with Warner Brothers and did Filter and it got on the Demon Knight soundtrack and the Demon Knight soundtrack wasn't really being promoted but uh, a, a, um, a DJ in Colorado Springs played Hey Man Nice Shot at 2 o'clock in the morning and got crazy phones and they started playing Hey Man Nice Shot over and over and then it spread to like 30 40 50 st stations then warner brothers asked us quickly to uh mix the record and get it done and then it finally came out in, in uh may of uh 1995 so that's kind of the beginning middle and end of the beginning of uh, my uh yeah and my start and it was an absolute huge hit and i love that how radio at that period of time was still have that regional power that mm -hmm. somebody would get behind a song. It's really yeah. still important. I'm, they do that at KLOS. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are programmed from, you know, big corporations, and, you know, it's like, you should have that freedom. That's a magic of what was great yeah. about ra radio and rock radio and FM yeah. radio. And any any genre. But what's so cool is, so let's talk about that. Then there was the whole thing where everybody was trying to figure out who's this song about, because mm -hmm. it was post-Kurt uh, Cobain's mm -hmm. suicide, which was... Heartbreaking to all of us, obviously, and yeah. um, and uh, just just affected an entire generation of people. Yeah. Uh, but talk to me about that because yeah. people didn't realize they it was didn't, about this yeah. guy, Bud our, Dwyer. Our, it was inspired by our Bud Dwyer back when I wrote it in '91. Yeah. So so Kurt was still alive. Kurt, Kurt was, was just... still alive. Everything was great in Nirvana world, and um, I had. It took me a couple years to finally 
get the record contract and then make the rest of the record. And by the time I had put the record out, Kurt had killed himself. But the song was written back in 1991. Yeah, I so, mean, the story yeah. about Bud Dwyer being a politician who was yeah. caught for, uh, you know, corruption and uh, the fact that he had done one of the most, uh, you know, uh, insane things and just really unspeakable in some ways was mm-hmm. he committed suicide in front of a camera. Yeah, uh, in, front of every, in front of everybody at a press conference. Yeah. He I was mean, trying to make a, a political statement uh, that, you know, he he felt that the judicial system had let him down and he was innocent and he just was not going to go to to prison. So he made this big, huge... Uh, dramatic statement and killed himself in front of you know all the cameras that day yeah with a pistol and yeah. it was unbelievable it yeah was, uh, and it, it was such yeah. a my lyric writing at the time i was you know early 20s i, I didn't really I, I didn't really want to write about love stories or love songs or any of that i didn't want to write about something that i really wasn't really didn't really know at the time like I hadn't really fallen in love with anyone at that point in time in my life and I I wanted to write lyrics that had a little bit of substance and topical you know yeah. and I just remember seeing I got the footage from Amok Bookstores on Lollapalooza yeah. and I saw the footage and it was really horrifying and I just thought to myself like what was the point wow hey man nice shot yeah. Like, kind of saying it sarcastically, and 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 because um, you saw it as yeah. a tragedy. And it I saw like it horrible. as a tragedy, and and this, you know, I wish I would have met you. Now it's a little late. What you could have taught me, I could have saved some face. Yeah, you know, it just is is just about like I probably would have respected you more if you hadn't just given up. Yeah, and and done something so dramatic. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was in, inspired by. Uh, the R. Bud Dwyer thing, but it can be applied to anything because it's. I kept the the lyrics vague enough to make it universal, so that you can apply it to Kurt Cobain. You could apply it to anybody, really. Yeah. Who commits suicide and and you know, uh, you know, um, takes their life way too soon. You know, I wish yeah. I would have met you. Oh, yeah. singing that over, you know, and over at the end yeah. of the song is is really like don't do it. You know, yes. it's, it's me saying. Don't do it, you know. Yeah, um, and it's such a great song. And, you thank know, you. And Short Bus became a big record, and then, of course, it's all about title record, too. And there was, you know, those two hits that came um, in, you know, off of those those records. When when Take a Picture came out, too, there was a beauty in that song. Mm-hmm. But it was a very personal experience mm-hmm. he talked about. It. And you and I are both guys that are sober, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. I'm very, I'm, by the way, uh, if you... 21 years. 21 yeah. years is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh Today, Today, the day that September we're doing this 28th. interview, which is phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I just think it's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. And, you know, I'm coming up on three and a half years, and I'm, yeah. I'm just so You're doing grateful. It. You're yeah. doing it. You're kicking ass. Yeah, yeah. For you know, I feel, yeah. I feel so much better. Yeah, that you know, I can deal with things. Um, you know, just I, I, I'm at this point very much protecting my sobriety mm-hmm. and, and will. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, it's a new way of life, and I, and I love it. You know, mm-hmm. I really do, and I'm very grateful, very grateful. Mm-hmm. Always have to remember, be humble, be grateful. Well, that's uh, mm-hmm. things that are good lessons for yeah. anyone. But, it, I mean, you were addressing what you were going through in the song, Take a yeah. Picture, yeah. Which, which was inspired by that experience. Take a Picture was, I was trying to finish the song, and I was stream of conscious writing the lyrics, just like anything that popped into my head, I just kind of wrote. And it took me until I was sober to really realize that I was, it was a cry for help. It was like I was, I was strung out on alcohol and and drugs and, you know, everything about it. Could you, you know, could you take my picture? Cause I won't remember, yeah. you know, and, uh, Hey dad, what do you think about your son now? That was kind of could go either way like hey dad i went platinum or hey dad i'm i'm in jail you know like that old song from the the repo man soundtrack hey dad i'm in jail yeah remember that yeah um i tried to find that on spotify it's it's you can't find it yeah there's too many things missing on spotify i have to say spotify apple 
have relatively the same things. Once in a while, you'll find things on the other that aren't there. Yeah. Or Amazon, and uh, that's the most frustrating thing about it. The 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 great thing is you have ease to uh, hear things when you want. The other is that a lot of things are missing. Mm-hmm. Even records I made as an A and R guy, like. Mm-hmm. At Columbia Records, like there'll be compilations that you, you did, like an Ozfest mm-hmm. compilation, or I did a WWF themes album that I put together for WWE mm-hmm. with like all these bands on it from Rob Zombie to, you know, uh, Limp Biscuit and everybody. And a lot of stuff's unavailable. It's like the, for whatever reason, it's not there. Mm-hmm. It's like blacked out, you know, yeah. like on, on the album. And I'm like, what? You know, yeah. So that's irritating. But let's talk about So take a picture. Yeah. That experience, the cry for help, yeah, was a, was a cry for help. And you, you know, we're yeah, guys like us. I've definitely gotten wasted on a plane before, and it is, <laughs> yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. without a question. I mean, because you know that was an opportunity. First of all, alcohol's hitting you at a major altitude, yeah. so it's going to be different. Secondly, I used to love to just get there and start hitting the bottle, listening to music, yeah, in my headphones, and. Uh, Yes, I mean I understand that experience. Yeah. So, but tell me about that one because this was real. I mean, this is was absolutely based on a real experience. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I I was pretty wild at heart and just and weird on top, as they say in that movie. And I just was like, you know, taking off my shirt and just wanted to feel comfortable. And yeah. they were like, "What are you doing?" And they threw me a, a blanket and said, "You know, cover yourself up and like get back to reality." And I had blacked out, and I don't remember any of it. Were you completely naked or just no, the top? No, no. it was just your top. Yeah, it was nobody. Just my top. Yeah. yeah. We're both, we, yeah. you know, we might have been out of it at times, yeah. but it's like not that not that out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I I was a rock star, like, in my head. Yes. You know, like, like, what's the matter, man? We're having a party. And lit up a cigarette and, like, yeah. didn't get, I, I, the second time I lit up a cigarette on an airplane, they, um, I was removed with SWAT, and this is before 9-11 in camera phones. But I acted crazy, like crazy, so they, they took me, and a, a friend of mine from the Chicago um, police force said, take that guy to the psych ward. He's He suffers from a bad heart kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, they took me to the psych ward, and I was in the psych ward, and this is a true story. The nurse at the psych ward uh, literally said, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll get you out of this if you take me on a date in, in a week or so. And yeah. I said, okay. And she signed all the paperwork and got the doctor to sign all the paperwork to release me. And I, yeah. I like, yeah. I like called her, and then she she realized I think you're way too crazy for me to like want a date. Yeah, you know, being that she's a medical expert and I'm like this crazy rock and roll musician, but it's a true story. And I got out of shit like that all the time. Can yeah. I swear? I didn't mean to swear. Yeah, no, you can. When, yeah, we'll just be- I I got a, I got out of stuff like that all the time. Yeah, like like. Uh, I abused my power. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things. It's you know, it's like you're also it's because you're younger, and you had the alcohol and drugs to it, yeah. and uh, and just people not not really saying. I mean, no. I, I I basically fell into thing like a thing where I turned into Keith Richards, like rock and roll baby. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. You know? And those were the guys we idolized. You know, yeah. What I mean, I mean it was up- it was it was basically, but apparently they had the Rolling Stones had private jets. Yeah, I was on a commercial airline, so it was much frowned upon about my behavior. Yeah, but yeah, man, I I I was out of control. Totally pushing the envelope. Uh, I mean, when my kids ask me what was it like to be in that situation, I'm going to say just watch the movie uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Or watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Because, I mean, there's so many parallels. Yes. You know? And And then uh, I also tell people to uh, watch Flight with Denzel Washington because, you know, that was me as an alcoholic addict. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just like Flight. some of the stuff he went through. Flight, yeah. Yeah, that's another great movie. What a great movie that yeah. is, man. Denzel, right? He's so yeah. amazing. Yeah, he's um, ama- that was an amazing movie. Yeah, I love yeah. that film, and boy, did it hit home. So, yeah. Uh, you know, i I, I got to say, and the great thing is, you know, we do we do recover. We do get out of these things. And But, again, it's like I understand, especially in that period when you're younger and all that stuff was going on. You and I were partying together back then. Mm-hmm. I remember you and I partying in, like, Trobe, Pennsylvania. 
Yeah. We were, you know what I mean? It was like, yeah. The, yeah. The, what was it called? The Rolling Rock Town the Fair. The Rolling Rock Town and Fair. And it was you, the Chili Peppers, Beck. Uh, uh, yeah. Beasties might have been there. Like it was all these bands. Yeah. And you I might, think it was Stone Temple Pilots. As to me, we were raging. I yeah. Mean, I just like, remember you and I going off and me singing with some cover band at the hotel. <laughs> like just, you know, some really yeah. fun stuff. Yeah. But of course, you know what? No, the, 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 the sad thing about drugs and alcohol is that. For a little while, yeah, they work. Yes, they do. They, you're funnier. You're you're living crazier times. You're there's no you're uninhibited. You're you know you're having a good time. The 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 sad thing is is that normal people will 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 go like okay I've had enough. The alcoholic is going to take it to the, the to the final point of just absolute destruction and and death and you know and that's the sad thing, yes. is that I could write a book on the amount of crazy fun times that yes. I had. I mean, all the way back to Nine Inch Nails. Yes. I mean, Trent and I were hysterical. We were we yeah. we had a blast back then. Yeah. You know, just totally going crazy, destroying things, destroying dressing rooms you know all kinds of crazy stuff and then you know and it's funny back then when you're 25 but like to do that when i'm 55 and i have a family and you know i'm now i'm a respectable part of society hopefully yeah you are uh, and it's like but, we both know it's a bad look when we get to our yeah age. yeah you know you're, I mean? you're you're out of your mind you yeah. know what i mean like and, and that's, that's why we say it too it's like i said it was fun that it was fun with problems that it was all problems i'm like that's enough yeah i mean i, I, yeah, it's, yeah. I finally said you know it's, it's, it's got to keep throwing the towel there's there a, you have this fun time when you're young when it when it kind of works and you're getting away with it blah 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 but then all of a sudden it just turns into total like it doesn't work the drugs do not work and yeah. now you're an addict and you're falling apart and you're losing your jobs and your your kids hate you and your wife hates you and you know what i mean like y your parents are mad your your all your friends hate you you know what i mean like it just gets worse and worse and worse and you know i i i can't say it enough like for all the people out there that are like struggling with alcohol and drug addiction, you can get it. You can yes. get your life back if you just try, but you've got to believe in yourself. Yeah. You really, really, really have to believe in yourself and, 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 and understand you can do it. You can do it and you're worth it. Yeah. You're really and worth you're it. worth it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have so many friends that are still kind of crazy and out there and I just, I just, there's, there's no agenda. Yeah. I'm just telling you that I'm living proof and that you can get sober. Yeah. And know? that's, it's the most beautiful thing ever. It's, it's, I'm so grateful all the way mm -hmm. around for it, Richard. And I love that. And you know, I'm so happy that Filter's back. I've got mm -hmm. to tell you. The algorithm, baby. The algorithm is the new album. Can we talk about seven years ago or so, you got back together. There was a thing that happened with you and Nine Inch Nails. It was kind of. Right, like Trent has always been such a big fan of yours, and he was like, you "Well, know, last year we reunited." Yes, which was great. Yeah, that was amazing. So, and talk to me about that because yeah, uh, the we were so excited to hear about it. this. Was was this for that Cleveland celebration? Yeah, it was the Cleveland with celebration. James Gang and who else played? No, that? this that was, was this was his own Rock and Roll Hall of Fame kind of induction oh. ceremony thing that he wanted to do yeah. in Cleveland because it didn't happen because of COVID yeah. and they couldn't play for, so he wanted to do something special uh, for Cleveland and that's what he did. And it was, again, COVID came in the next year and we had to move it back another whole year. And, uh, but we did it and it was amazing. And I, I mean, it, it basically Trent totally put me, in the the in the limelight and and said you're singing a racer you're going to come out we're going to be playing a racer you're going to come out you're going to sing and yeah. um you're going to sing a racer and then you're going to do wish we're going to play sin and gave up and then we're going to do hey man nice shot then we're going to do head like a hole and you're going to sing the second verse in head like a hole so he he like completely highlighted me and uh, just made me feel like uh, so welcome back in the band, and uh, it was absolutely amazing. And and it, it's up there, it's, uh, definitely one of the highlights of my life for sure. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing to see yeah. you guys. 
back together and that really giving you that feeling like, hey, you know, I need I need making music again. I'm sure mm-hmm. that Trent was probably telling you the same thing behind the scenes, right? When said, for you to write, you start working on some new stuff. Oh and yeah. To be well, active. I the funny thing is, is I mean, it had been seven years since the last record, but I had started this whole other career as being a movie composer, a film composer. Tell me about that. And it's amazing. I'm yeah. I'm actually working on a new movie that just is just got finished. Uh, it's actually in the process of being finished because I'm still working on the score. But it's called Cold Deck, yeah. and it has Alec Baldwin and Stephen Dwarf in it. And um, it's it's a it's a revenge piece, and it's amazing. It's it reminds me of like. Mandy meets No Country for Old Men. Yeah, wow. it's really good. It's about lumberjacks and and meth dealers and all kinds of craziness. And yeah, sounds cool. So yeah, that's that's a, a great example of what I'm working on. Brian Skiba is directing it, and um, but yeah, I did a movie called uh, uh, Dark Crimes with Jim Carrey. I did a movie called The Second with Ryan Phillippe in it. Yeah. I did a movie. My brother's in it called Last Rampage. Yeah. I did a movie called uh, The Chariot, starring John Malkovich. All these cool people. Yeah, all these. And cool I always loved yeah. that your brother was Robert Patrick. The, yeah, the bad Terminator. Yeah, right? the Terminator was so it's evil. Terminator, the T one thousand. Yeah, and you know he's such a great guy. Your brother too. It's like cool. It's yeah, a talented family there. Right? Yeah, he. Well, it's weird because we both like we didn't have. To, you know, we weren't born into it like some other kids. We or or something like that. We we literally, he moved from Cleveland, in like 1984 to go to Los Angeles to become a movie actor, become a movie star. Yeah. And I was in Cleveland and hung out with Trent, and we built Nine Inch Nails up and and did that separately like it was it was it wasn't like we had any ins you know right. what i mean no, exactly. my brother literally had a car he lived out of his car for the first couple of months when he got to los angeles because his car broke down and he had to spend all of his money on getting the engine replaced and like so he was out there like you know just living hand to mouth for like the first couple of months out there until he could find a job as a waiter so like humble beginnings from the Patrick brothers. Yeah, like, you know. but you both did, and I think yeah. that's one of the most important things. You know, yeah. it's I, I can relate to that because I knew nobody, yeah. no one in the music business at all mm-hmm. either. You know, I was doing college radio, meeting people where in the nightclubs where I was DJing, and you know, I'm very grateful for that. But we're passionate; we love mm-hmm. what we do. That's what it really was about. So, you know, there were lean times, and and some good times. But regardless. Yeah. The beauty is that we're, we're both still here. But I love that about you and your brother, and I think it's mm-hmm. it's an incredible thing. It's cool. I'm so glad that you've started working on the algorithm. Talk mm-hmm. to me about this record because yeah. there's so many cool songs on it, and we play. Yeah, you've been in our countdown here, mm-hmm. and you're you know you and of course you've the new single too, which we're going to talk about. Obliteration. Obliteration. Yeah. But let's talk about let's go back to talking about this making the algorithm and, mm-hmm. and, and the vision for this record. Well, the algorithm was started off, it was going to be called Rebus, because I was working with Brian Leesgang, but then that kind of fell apart. But I still wrote four songs with Brian Leesgang, which I'm really proud of. They're America, uh, Thoughts and Prayers, and Summer Child and uh, Command Z. And Summer Child and Command Z are on the record. America and Thoughts and Prayers, I just got really antsy one day and put them out myself just to, yeah. just for the fun of it. So I, 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 we hadn't gotten signed to Golden Robots yet, and I, and I, I was just kind of feeling like I wanted to release something for the fun of it, just to see what it would do. Yeah. And um, but then. When it came time, when when I signed a deal with Golden Robot, I it came time to kind of circle the wagons. I had a bunch of music that I had been working on, and um, I got Brian Virtue to help me kind of co-produce it. But I the big difference between this record and like a lot of other records in the last 10, 15 years is the fact that like it started off in my computer. Like it was like. This is this is going to be going through my computer, and I'm going to be the engineer on it, and I'm going to be the producer on it, and the main songwriter on it. And I still worked with other people like Zach Monowitz and and Sam Tenez and Mark Jackson and Ian Scott, and um, I I I you know and and Brian Leeskang, but I 
I still made sure that it had my kind of signature sound on it, you know, my kind of approach to music, my production. And um, I think that shows in this record. And yeah. I, 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 I like to think that it's the best thing about the record <laughs> because that's the only difference. And everyone's talking about this record as like a return to form. Yeah. And we haven't even gotten any bad reviews on it. Like, yeah. I mean, a couple of misguided comments from the Facebook or whatever, but... And you always get those. Yeah, you always get you know. a couple of knuckleheads trying to comment. Yeah. But no real critics have, have panned the record or, or said anything bad about it, which is awesome. Yeah. You know, which... And, and I literally, I did it from the best place possible. I I don't know what if records go platinum anymore i don't know if they sell i don't know how many people hear them i the only thing i know is is i'm a songwriter and i wanted to write a bunch of songs that i loved you know yeah. writing and when it came time to do a record i just picked the the 11 best and jumped in and and started finishing them and then put it out you know yeah. and it came from a place of love and kind of comfort like i wasn't doing it to like get out there and have another hit record. You know what I mean? I yeah. was doing it just because I love music and I love uh, putting stuff out. And it was purely from that point of view that made it, I think, a good record. Yeah, because there was no question about it that it's uh, people, uh, their response has been incredible to it as mm -hmm. well. Talk to me about the tour that you were just on. As oh, well, my God. Time. That was amazing. Well, let's talk about it because it's all guys It was that we called love. Freaks on Parade, and it was Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, Ministry, and Filter opening up the show. Yeah, what a great bill. Yeah. And you got to watch those guys every night and hang out with old friends, right? Yeah, it was a great bill, and it was very successful. Yeah. And I'm proud to say, as an opening band, we had pretty much the crowd inside the venue when we went on stage. Because sometimes when I was on OzFest back in 1995 or something like that, it wasn't even called OzFest. It was like, it was called the End of Re Retirement Tour or something like that. And literally, his audience was in the parking lot when we were on stage. There was no one there. Yeah, Ozzy's audience. So, was so I was a bit apprehensive, like opening up the whole show and having the crowd fully be in there. And um, it was awesome because everyone showed up. So yeah. I was pretty. And happy. I'm glad. Yeah. Well, I think it's, that's because people were seriously getting a good bang for their buck there. Yeah. To see four great bands. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like that. That was one of my favorite bills. Yeah, I've got to say that uh, that went out this year. It was awesome, and we had such a great time as fans and friends. Like I'm, I love everybody. I I love Dallas Cooper and and Rob Zombie, and we would get done watching. We were cleaning up after our show, and then we would go hurry up and run out and watch Ministry. Yeah, and Al was great. He he, Al and his band are amazing. Yeah, Roy on Roy drums is one of the greatest drummers. Just amazing yeah. drummer. My yeah. God. And everyone, Paul and Monty, and, yeah. and, and then we would see Alice Cooper and his band, and Alice would chop his head off every night. Yeah, and uh, which is know, always an enjoyable experience. Yeah, I, I love I mean, the snake now. and everything, yeah. and the canes and everything is whipping yeah. around. Yeah. And then Rob with the monsters and the the video walls, yeah. and you know everything is going crazy. I literally like. It was awesome. Like I would go out and make sure that I saw my monsters because they were so funny to yeah. watch. Yeah, oh, those monsters. Were the monsters could go on the stage, the robot and everything yeah, like that. Just so had good. just had a blast, you know, just watching it. It was, was so much fun. It was so much fun, and yeah. you, know, you could just tell that was such a. A lot of times, sometimes bills, you know, don't have it. it you wonder when you're thinking about it. Like there's either two ways you can go. Like, hey, let's make things that are really diverse, or what would be a package of seeing four bands. Who you know everybody would really like and has has a great vibe mm -hmm. and feeling and that's yeah. what that was. Well, it was very diverse in the sense that I, I don't consider us freaks. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's about the only thing. Yeah. Like you know, Rob and Alice, they're freaky. They're pretty freaky. Yeah. No, and Al no. can be too, right? Yeah, yeah of course, Al. Yeah. yeah, no, but I, I'm making fun of the fact that we're kind of just like a regular rock band. Yeah. But, um, no, they 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 bring their show and they're insanely entertaining and it, it's, it was amazing and they've got hits and great music to back it up and yeah and uh, you know and Alice was really cool he my cousin actually 
uh, lost his house to a fire and he's starting over and he had this great rock and roll collection of stuff and so I got Alice Cooper to sign a cane yeah and I sent that to my cousin that's great yeah. that's an awesome way to help him yeah. out again yeah, Alice I mean? is such a kind yeah, guy well uh, he my cousin loves Alice Cooper like more than anybody I've ever met so he's a huge fan and uh yeah, I I got him a cane. It was it was awesome of Alice to do that. And, yeah, and, that's amazing too. Yeah. And so let's talk about the obliteration, the new yeah. single that we're we're playing. Obliteration. Now that's that goes back to being sober. Yeah. Yeah. The whole the whole song lyrically is about my sobriety and how uh, you know I was you know on the edge of dying and uh, so many times and. And, uh, you know, how your brain is the enemy. You know, your brain is trying to kill you. It's, it, it, you know, your best thinking is leading you to this early grave, you know. Yeah. And um, just trying to fight it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm proud of Obliteration. Obliteration was written with Sam Tenez and Mark ja uh, Jackson and Ian Scott. And uh, they were amazing producers as well. They co-produced it as well and um yeah it's just an awesome song and it sounds like old school filter which i which i really appreciate because that's yeah. kind of that's kind of my jam is is doing some old school sounding filter stuff you yeah know what i mean like i i love the adventurism of for the beaten and everything like that like that's some brand brand new ground being broken on how to make sounds with the guitar yeah um but yeah obliteration kind of kind of circles back to you know to songs like where do we go from here yeah stuff like that great track too yeah absolutely i yeah. love this i gotta say i'm really excited that you've been able to come in here and catch up with us richard you gotta tell me um over the next six months once the holidays and everything pass what's the plan for next year Are you doing some more shows the plan for next year is to tour uh extensively hopefully throughout uh, throughout the u.s but we're definitely we're going to europe in march and we're going to um uh australia in april and that's that's going to be great because we haven't been to australia in a long time and uh, as headliners these are both headlining tours so that's going to be fun because we like to play for like an hour and a half usually yeah we did a live stream together recently, which was great, and you did twenty something songs. Right? It was like two hours. It yeah. was it was kind of crazy. I think we were a bit ambitious, and then we had the big drama of 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 Danny Loner forgetting his yeah. his in ears yeah. upstairs in the dressing room. He was amazing. We love Danny. Yeah. If we could somehow swing it, we would take Danny out with us all the time because yeah. he's awesome. Yeah, he is great. He's a great a... rhythm guitar player, great yeah. guitar player, great yeah. musical mind, and yeah. just a good person to have around. Absolutely. He's yeah. part of the old, old crew, too, yeah, which is cool. For yeah, but he, he, it was funny because I left Nine Inch Nails, and he came in to replace me. Yeah. So we never really knew each other in Nine Inch Nails, but we know each other now in Filter, which is cool. Which is great, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to say congratulations on this great new record, how it's been received, how we've been playing it here on KLOS, which is awesome. And Thank you so much for that, by Yeah, the way. and we're going to be hanging with you again soon. I'll definitely come and see you. But, Richard, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for coming in and sharing your stories and being a part of the show today. It was awesome. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's fantastic. Richard Patrick of Filter. This is KLOS New and Approved. I'm Matt Pinfield. We'll be back with you soon.